Hey, what's up, everybody? Metal Biker Dude coming at you here. Um, so I already lost it on uh, the George Carlin bit, and uh, now I am doing Black Friends Clothes in Harlem, uh, Bill Burr. And as you might remember, I made it through the last Bill Burr I did, which was something about aggravating a pit bull or something. And, uh, and yeah, so Michael Frado uh, wanted me to, to do this one here. So um, it is time for Make Me Laugh is where you guys send me a description from a comedy skit that you think is going to make me laugh. The objective here is for me to not laugh, but it's like the easiest thing in the world, man. So here we go. Bill Burr, Black Friends Clothes in Harlem. <laughs> Actually, I got a couple of uh, friends of uh, African persuasion, and uh, I gotta get rid of them, man. I gotta admit to you. I'm fine, I'm spending too much money on clothes hanging out with them, because I gotta like fucking try to keep up with their wardrobe. It's like every time they go out, they got all brand new shit on. All brand new shit. So when I show up with my white version of brand new, which is, you know, I basically, I ironed the shit, right? I ironed it, right? It's new. They just start trashing me. I can't keep up with them, man. They got like fucking 58 pairs of sneakers. <laughs> Ever notice that shit? Like every color fucking Timberland. And I don't give a shit what fucked up color their shirt is. They got a pair of shoes to match it and a hat. <laughs> it's like a rule or something. They're the worst. Even when you wear some new shit, there's like some sort of rule that you gotta like space out the amount of time with, within which like that you wear it. Because God forbid you wear the same shirt within a 10-day period, one of them's going to notice. All of a sudden, just look at you funny like, this motherfucker's got the same shit he had on last Tuesday. <laughs> and then the whole car's like, oh, shit! <laughs> and then everybody just starts making fun of your fucking clothes. Oh, my God. First, they do the math. Like, what was that, five days ago? Five days, this motherfucker got five shirts. <laughs> start breaking it down. Yo, his first shirt be saying Monday, next shit be saying Tuesday. Yo, on the weekend, he ain't be wearing no shirt. <laughs> I'll tell you, that's actually funny. You know what? That's actually how, uh, how I judge oh black Oh, my God. Guys. When I first came to the city, like, all black people scared me. No, I was like the typical white dude from, like, the suburbs, you know what I mean? I had no frame of reference, you know? So my only frame of reference with black people was, like, those, remember those early 90s gangster rap videos? Throw the fucking L.A. riots in there, man. It was fucking horrible PR. <laughs> I'm watching the videos. He's got a nice car. He's got all the women. And he's still fucking mad. <laughs> These black dudes are never happy. <laughs> but after 10 years of living in the city, this is how I narrow it down. Whether well, black dude scares me or not. Black dudes with dirty sneakers scare the fucking shit out of me. <laughs> no. <laughs> I it out of my head because I know if I'm hanging out with them, that's the last shit that they're going to let go, the immediate shit that they have on. So I think, you know, if his sneakers are fucked up, that means his life is fucked up. Every time he leaves his building, the whole neighborhood, oh, shit! <laughs> Everyone starts making fun of him. He's on the train in a bad mood. I kind of have this howdy doody, kind of mug me kind of face. <laughs> I'm not saying something's going to happen. I'm just saying, I'm paying attention. <laughs> so I've been seeing this girl recently. Uh, oh black my girl, God. Right? She lives up in Harlem, you know. Gone out like three, four times, you know. First time we hung out, we hung out in like the village area in New York, you know, which is sort of like a racially mixed area. <laughs> so shit was cool, you know what I mean? Second time we hung out was more like Midtown, you know. Then the third time, she called me at like 3 30 in the morning and she wanted me to come up to her apartment, right? So it's 3 30 in the morning, she lives in Harlem, I look how I look, so it's a fucking situation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, cause you know the deal, right? Basically, a white dude feels comfortable up to about like 98th, 99th Street. You know what I'm saying? The second the streets start getting into like triple digits, like 100, 101st Street, start getting like a little asthma, like, ah, oh, fuck, it's starting to get a little high up here. <laughs> you feel that little tightness in your chest? Can you feel that? 106th Street, you're like leaning on shit, like, dude, where'd all the cabs go? 
How come there's no taxis up here? Dude, what's a bodega? I don't even know what that is. Let's get the fuck out of here. Oh my god. Oh shit. I'm praying to God she's gonna tell me to take the subway, get off at like 105th Street, 103rd, you know, which is like the first stop in Harlem where I can still look over my shoulder and see like all the white people like disappearing over the horizon, you know? But she goes, no, man, you want to get on the Uptown 2-3 train, you want to get off at 125th Street. I'm like, ah, fuck, 125th Street. <laughs> Jesus Christ, that's like right in the middle of everything. Oh, my God, man. I'm going to be surrounded on all four sides. I can't fucking do this. Oh, fuck. <laughs> so, at this point, I'm really trying to hide, like, the bitchy tone that's starting to creep into my voice, you know? <laughs> for really specific directions for when I get up there because I want to know exactly where I'm going. So she starts naming the streets I have to go down and every other street up there is named after like a black leader, you know, she's like, make a left on Adam Clayton, take a right on Frederick Douglass. I'm like, God, ah, fuck Adam Clayton. <laughs> Yo, dude, go on the internet, look up Adam Clayton. Did he kill a bunch of white people during the slave revolt? <laughs> dude, I ain't going up there until I know what Adam Clayton did. Fuck this shit. <laughs> So at oh this my point, God. I'm really having a battle with myself. Because I'm thinking I can't do this, right? I'm like, I can't do this, but my dick's going, no, come on, man, we can do this, all right? <laughs> Just relax. Pull yourself together and get on the goddamn train, right? So as always, I listen to my dick. <laughs> oh, yeah, I get on the train. By the time I get up there, it's like 5 or 4 in the morning, right? I'm staying on, like, Malcolm X and, like, Danny Glover or some shit, right? <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know where the hell I'm at. <laughs> when I see the street, I want to go up. I want to go up St. Nick. I can literally see her apartment building, but there's like five or six black dudes standing right on the corner, right where I want to walk by. So I'm like, fuck! <laughs> I felt like I was on like some reality show at that point, like some sort of like white guy survivor. It was ridiculous. My fucking cheeks are killing me, man. So I'm thinking, I got to walk right by these guys, right? You know what's funny? I think that they were actually more surprised to see me than I was scared, you know? And I was really, really scared, you know, but I'm also really, really white, you know? Like, shockingly Caucasian. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, if you're not ready for me, I can, like, surprise you. <laughs> no, especially if you live up there. You've probably seen a white person for hours, possibly days. So when I show up, it's almost, like, magical. Like, a leprechaun came out of nowhere, you know? <laughs> Felt like I should have had, like, a little pot of gold. Like a rainbow behind me, top of the morning to you, lad. <laughs> kind of dance my way past them. But it's been going all right, you know. Once I get in her apartment, I'm fine, you know. I relax, sit down, you know, watch a hip-hop countdown. <laughs> Pretend like I know the groups, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. It's just getting there that's a fucking pain in the ass. But you know, I don't get mad at it, because I figure, you know, black dudes gotta go through the same shit though, right? When you go out to the suburbs, go fuck a white girl, right? <laughs> just that same awful feeling of just leaving your people behind, you know, just less and less of you as you're fucking driving out there. <laughs> Probably start off lean and you're all fucking cool. 20 minutes in, you're driving like 10 and two, the radio's off, like, dude, I don't like this shit. <laughs> I don't like this shit at all. There's too much grass, I don't see any rims. <laughs> this is fucked up. None of the windows are tinted. I can clearly see white people in every car. This is fucked up. Oh my god. Listen, you guys were awesome. Thank you so much for coming out. God bless you. Thank you very much. Right, wow. Man, that was fucking hilarious. Holy shit, my fucking cheeks are killing me. Oh my god, man. Absolutely killing me. <clears throat> It's fucked up because I laughed about 30 seconds into the George Carlin one, and, it, and that was almost eight minutes long. And oh, Michael, you got me. You got me. Little Biker, do peace. <laughs> <laughs>